I have got so much positive feedback and so much love on my macro b-roll video and also some questions about macro video in general. So I will break down my b-roll into 10 tips about uh, macro video. Hey, you're welcome. One of the challenges when shooting macro is that you have a very narrow field of view and you also have a extremely short depth of field. So many of these tips will be about nailing the focus and keeping the camera steady and prevent the shakiness and blur. My first tip is to use manual focus because many cameras will struggle with uh, autofocus and it will start uh, hunting and it can't really find the focus point or uh, navigate in this uh, short depth of field. When shooting small subjects, a camera movement of just a millimeter can almost get the subject out of frame and even if you have a camera movement that is only a fraction of a millimeter that can cause uh, shakiness and blur on your footage so use a tripod as often as you can when you shoot so extreme close-ups you might lose details so it only looks like a solid color surface Spraying small droplets on your subject will create details and on a soft drink or a fruit it will also look fresh. But when you spray water it will uh, easily fall off or drip off and it will also create very small droplets. So I use uh, a mixture of water and uh, glycerin to um, get uh, bigger droplets that are more durable and will stay on your subject for a longer time. If you want to try macro photography but not spend a fortune on a macro lens, you can use uh, macro extension tubes that are significantly cheaper. You can achieve amazing results using substantially cheaper macro extension tubes. The extension tubes are shifting the minimum focusing distance towards the camera so you can focus real close up to your subject. I use extension tubes from Mikey for my Sony E-mount lenses. That is a set of two tubes, 10 mm and 16 mm. You can also stack the tubes to get a total of 26 mm tube extension. You can keep both the camera and your subject still to avoid shakiness in your footage. Then you can move your light source instead to create motion in your video. If you are shooting at a higher frame rate you can then slow down your footage to slow motion. And the benefit of slow motion is obviously that it's slowing motion down. Uh, but that will actually make your footage a lot less uh, shaky and less jittery and give you more fluent motions and uh, your videos will look more appealing. When you are composing your scene I recommend that you have some extra space in your frame because when you have that you can use image stabilization in post and most algorithms that are stabilizing footage in post will actually crop in a bit on your footage. So the more space you have on your sides, the more stabilized you can get your footage in post. I also recommend that you step down your aperture because when you are shooting macro, you will have this extremely short depth of field. So it doesn't really make sense to shoot at aperture 1.4 and have it ridiculously short. So I would suggest shooting at maybe aperture 8 or if you have the possibility and can get the amount of light needed, I, you can shoot at aperture 16 or 22. But uh, do whatever you can do to increase or extend the depth of field. 
You can mix up your video with uh, animated still photos. You can uh, crop in on them using Ken Burns or you can use keyframes. In my macro b-roll I used both uh, rotation and uh, zooming on my photos. And by doing this in post on a still image I will get a much smoother motion than if I would have been rotating and moved my camera. And finally I recommend you to experiment with uh, alternative angles or compositions. A general good rule of thumb is to shoot for edit and that means that you have already planned your uh, final product or your final video how you want it to be so you can uh, use some uh, camera movements to help your transitions in the editing. But when you have shot all the scenes that you have planned I really recommend you to experiment with the composition and angle so you can shoot from above or underneath or change the direction of the light because shooting macro it's almost like stepping into a different world uh, where everything is so tiny and it's actually a bit difficult to predict how things will look when you shoot the actual video or take the photos so by doing this you can uh, get a lot of cool footage that you didn't believe that you would get. So these were all the 10 tips I had for you. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.